Hello and welcome. My name's Andrew Mangaday. I'm a solo game developer working in Game Maker and also making my own engines. Today I want to talk about my favorite design pattern, which is the Observer pattern. Now, I'm going to be talking at a very high level today, so you can implement this in any language you like, in any tool, any game engine you like, but it will really pay off. So here's the idea. As a simple example, imagine we've just got a player and we want the player to jump, but we want a number of things to happen. We want the audio system to randomly select a sound effect for jumping for our player and play it. And we want the camera to sort of pull back. So in all of these scenarios, it would be nice if the behavior was just managed by those individual systems, but we would need some way to indicate that this event has happened. One technique that a lot of beginners use, and I used, you know, back in the day when I was starting out, is adding extra flags, adding a variable to indicate that the player is jumping. There are issues with this. So imagine, for instance, that we've got a whole lot of different objects which can trigger some events, and they've all got these variables, and our system then has to walk through them one by one, even in cases where no action needs to be taken. As another example, consider the possibility where we've got multiple systems checking the same variable, but then one system resets the variable and then another system accidentally doesn't see its value. Now, another approach, at least in Game Maker, is we have alarms. So we could set an alarm in the system as an indicator for it to handle an event. But, um, then we run into some issues. So let's say that we've got alarm one indicating that an, a sound effect should be played. And then we have a bunch of objects. They all trigger alarm one. Alarm one can only be triggered once. So then we would have to start to worry about the internals of that object. Like does the object have a queue of sound effects to play? Um, but then some systems have a queue to handle multiple calls and some don't. And so the point I'm getting at is we start to have to worry about the internals of how these objects are implemented, which is sort of defeating the purpose of having a nice pattern. So event publishing, here's how it works. First of all, we define an event as it, it could be very, very straightforward. It could just be a code to indicate the type of event that happened. Um, usually I would have the type of event that happened, the type of object that triggered the event, and then just an extra parameter which can store anything. And it's just any sort of data associated with the event. It might be null, that's fine. It might be the object that triggered the event. It might be some sort of record of the position where the event occurred, doesn't matter. But then we have event queues and event queues are queues. So your standard queue data structure, whichever programming language or engine you're operating in, they should all have this implemented. This also gets around one of the other issues with large software projects, which is circular imports. So let's say we've defined a class which is going to handle a system. Does the class need to know about all the other classes? No, it doesn't. It just needs to know about a queue and we don't have classes importing other classes and so on and so on. So anything which should handle events can have an event queue and then objects have lists or they have observers. They have a list of event queues to which events are published. So we can add an observer to an object's list of observers. An object can publish an event, which just pops it or pushes it onto each of the queues in that list. And then in each system's individual update function, it continually looks through its event queue, pops events off, can either handle them or ignore them. And that's the real power of this pattern is we're also able to simply ignore events and do nothing. So there we have it. That's a rundown of the observer pattern, my favorite pattern in game development. It really makes a lot of things very simple, but I just want to be very clear about something. 
This is not the only way to solve this problem. I know I've sort of ran through a bunch of options and said there's a problem with this, there's a problem with this, there's a problem with this. If you have a solution that works, then that's, that's good enough. At the end of the day, anything that gets the problem solved is good enough. Okay, so maybe if this inspired you, you can go to your engine and implement your own observer pattern. But for now, that will be it for me. So all the best, have fun, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.